So let's say you have a reaction like Mg or magnesium solid and you react it with uh, hydrochloric acid which is always dissolved in water that's what aqueous is and um, if you see a reaction taking place there's really only one thing that can happen it's going to be a single replacement where uh, the magnesium uh, is now going to um, bind to the chlorine and uh, you probably see some bubbles the only other thing those bubbles can be uh, will, will be the only thing that's actually um, the only other uh, element that's on the left side hydrogen okay now <clears throat> if we uh, let's look at the hydrogen first hydrogen uh, bubbles mean gas so uh, and, and this is a diatomic uh, molecule hydrogen can only exist as H2 okay, so we can fill that in just like that and uh, now let, let's take a closer look at magnesium chloride. How would you write that? Well, first thing you're going to do is write out the elements, and then you're going to want to put in your charges. Your charge on chlorine is always minus 1, because it's in group 7. And if it's electronegative, uh, it's going to want to gain uh, the one electron. Right? right over here, it's a little cut off. but. And uh, if you look at magnesium, magnesium is in group 2. Okay. Now, remember, everything on the right is going to be, uh, or actually 9 times out of 10 to the right of carbon, is going to uh, obtain a negative charge and that means everything to the left is going to be plus. If it's plus it's going to want to give away all of its valence electrons. So magnesium is in group 2, it has two valence electrons so that becomes plus 2. Okay. Now once you put in your uh, charges you're going to want to put in the number of atoms that you have uh, for these, uh, for the plus and the minuses to cancel out each other. How many chlorines do you need to cancel out plus two? Well, you're going to need two, since two times negative one is negative two, and that's going to cancel out the plus two on the magnesium, because the overall net charge of anything to exist has to be zero. Uh, otherwise, uh, it, it will have a charge on it, and it might want to react with, uh, with something. So this is how you write magnesium chloride. Now, whenever you're given some type of mass... Uh, and, and a chemical reaction. Uh, one thing uh, you're going to want to do to organize your information is to make a mass, molar mass, mole table. And to review uh, from the mole video, uh, mole equals mass over molar mass, always. And molar mass you get from the periodic table. I'll just write PT over here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what do you have so far? Well, if we fill in what's given to us, uh, let's say, for example, we weigh out 0 0.25 grams of magnesium. And let's say in the end you obtain 0 0.95 grams of magnesium chloride. And uh, another thing that, that we uh, can fill in on the mass molar mass molar table is, uh, well, molar mass. You just get that from the PT or periodic table. That, that's pretty easy. Let's just, uh, for, for the sake of uh, uh, making this quick, let's just uh, round to the nearest whole number for uh, molar mass. So 24 for magnesium. And uh, magnesium chloride is going to be uh, 95 grams per mole. How do you get that? Well, again, just look at the PT. Magnesium is around 24. Chlorine is uh, around 35.5. So you got two chlorines. It's going to be 71. 71 plus 24 will give you the uh, 95 for magnesium chloride. You got mass, molar mass. What's next? Well, you can easily calculate moles. Just divide the two. So for the number of moles of magnesium you started with, it's going to be 0 0.010. Okay. You should have two significant figures here since you uh, started out or weighed out two. And um, in terms of the number of moles of magnesium chloride you obtain, just divide these two guys here 
get the same thing. So actually, this would be kind of a rare case where you get exactly 100% yield of your product. Let's take a look at uh, our other reactant, the uh, hydrochloric acid. And um, let's say, for example, if you used uh, 50 ml of one molar. I'm just going to write that up here. 50 ml of a one molar solution. Well, that's going to equal, um, in terms of the number of moles that we have, Uh, you have to first convert this to 0 0.050 liters, and then you just multiply that by the concentration, and that's how you get number of moles. All right, and that's just going to be uh, zero. Point <laughs> zero five zero mole. All right, I, I gotta soundproof this this office, and uh, so we write that down here: zero point zero five zero mole. So for uh, for the limiting reagent, um, it's going to be magnesium. And the reason why that is is because I need two moles of chlorine to react with each mole of magnesium. Okay, and uh, so we, and that means that I really just need 0 0.02 moles of chlorine, right? Because I need to meet, I need to make the MgCl2. But I have an excess. I have 0 0.050 moles of chlorine, so this is going to be an excess. Again, I'm only using. 0 0.020 mole. Since it's uh, Mg, and then I need uh, two chlorine atoms to make the MgCl to make one mole of MgCl2. All right. Now be careful. This is one whole mole of magnesium chloride, but there's actually uh, for each one of these guys, there's two uh, moles of chlorine. So that's why the amount of chlorine you need is double. We wanted to find out the um, percent. composition uh, in magnesium chloride of magnesium. So I'll write uh, of Mg, I'll write here in MgCl2. Well, you might be tempted to say, well, okay, you have one atom of magnesium and you have uh, two uh, atoms of chlorine to go along with that. So you have 33% magnesium, right? wrong because it's percent composition by weight right chlorine's heavier so um, it's going to take up an even larger uh, portion it's not just going to be 66 percent okay so the first thing you're going to do is take the uh, atomic weight of magnesium and then divide it by the uh, molar mass or molecular weight of uh, magnesium chloride and again you got to get that from periodic table let's round we're going to take uh, 24 divided by uh, 24 plus 2 chlorines. That's going to be 95. So 24 over 95 is going to equal 0 0.25. So we got about 25% of magnesium in magnesium chloride. What about of chlorine? Well, again, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take the um, total amount of chlorine you have, which are two atoms, or, or two mole uh, in this case, let's say for every mole of magnesium chloride. Okay, and, and the reason why you're using two is because you, you want to know what the total uh, percent composition of the chlorine uh, in the magnesium chloride is. And for that, you just take, well, how much do two uh, atoms of uh, chlorine weigh. That's going to be, uh, well, go back to the PT, 35.5 times 2, 71, over, well, we know the molar mass of magnesium chloride is 95. 
and that's going to be about 0 0.74, actually, probably closer to 7.4. That's 74%. And uh, if we had used the exact, uh, more accurate values on the periodic table, this would have been closer to 75. Okay, so that these two add up to 100. 100% 100 composition. So you got around 74, uh, I would say it's 75% of uh, chlorine and around 25% of magnesium. Okay, so it turned out, the magnesium weight turned out to be one-fourth, right, and not, not one-third, because it's uh, so much lighter by weight uh, than um, chlorine. Finally, what if you had something like, um, a question like how many grams of chlorine reacted. And, um, well, you know from the reaction that, uh, okay, you have 0 0.05 moles of hydrochloric acid. And uh, oh, and you also need 0 0.02 moles of chlorine to react with um, 0 0.01 moles of magnesium to make the magnesium chloride, because because you need double the amount. There, remember, there's two atoms of chlorine attached to each magnesium. So let's say that we know that 0 0.020 moles of chlorine reacted, but they want grams. Well, that's okay, you just convert. Multiply this by the um, atomic weight of magnesium, I'm sorry, of uh, chlorine, which is 35.5. And you're going to get, let's see, let's see around um, 0.71. Sounds right. Because again, it goes back to, if you're not sure how I got that, it goes back to mole equal mass over molar mass or atomic weight. Both those values you get from the periodic table. And um, in this case, I wanted to find the mass and I was given mole and molar mass or atomic weight from the periodic table. So all I need to do is multiply it side by molar mass. These guys cancel, and now I have mole times molar mass equal mass, which is what I just did here. Mole times molar mass uh, or atomic weight. Again, both those are very similar because you get them from the periodic table. 